the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello, friends. It is our joy to welcome you to this service of Holy Eucharist with spiritual communion on this, the fifth, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. I give thanks to God that you are participating from this service and pray that our common worship, while humble, may be a worthy means to praise our Lord and also for us to listen and walk into God is speaking to our lives as we flourish within the body of the church and the whole people of God in his world and meet Jesus in his sacrament of the altar. In the week that just ended, we celebrated Canada Day. I congratulate all my fellow Canadian residents Something tells me that for the rest of our lives we will remember this Canada Day. And because this our national feast was only four days ago, it is quite appropriate that we shall sing our national anthem today and led by our own Rob Laurie. But also that first we shall bring Canada, her peoples, her wounds and dreams and hopes before the merciful presence of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose wisdom and whose love are over all, accept the prayers and thanks we offer for this country of Canada, give integrity to her citizens and wisdom to those in authority, that harmony and justice may be secured in obedience to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. 
You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, has taught us that what we do for the least of your children, we do also for him. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave up his life and died for us, but lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, and now we listen to the reading of the Scriptures. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good that I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I that do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there within me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me prisoner to the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us say together the words of the second chapter from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, look, look he, he comes, comes leaping, leaping upon, upon the mountains, mountains bounding over, over the hills. hills. My, my beloved, beloved is like, like a, gazelle a gazelle or a young stag. stag. Look, there, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, windows looking through the lattice. lattice. My, my beloved, beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. 
the fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her deeds. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. May only the truth be spoken. May only the truth be heard. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, my friends. As always, it is so good to be with you. Today's gospel lesson ends with words of Jesus which have also been preserved in our service of Holy Communion as part of the comfortable words. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is Jesus saying these words in this 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew? Previously, in chapter 10, Jesus called and appointed his 12 apostles and warned them about the challenges and joys ahead in their ministries. Chapter 11 begins with Jesus addressing the disciples of John the Baptist, who came asking in few words, whether Jesus was the real deal. And the Lord responded by pointing to instances of liberation, of people being healed, of instances of people with their humanity being blessed into its original wholeness. The blind sees, says Jesus, the lame walks, the leper is cleansed, and the good news, good news is preached to the poor. As John's disciples return to their teacher with such news, Jesus asks his own disciples, How come people don't see the stature of John the Baptist? Why won't his warnings and calls to repentance be heard? Those who act this way, Jesus says, behave like children amused by one thing now to forget it all in the blink of an eye. They lack the depth to see the signs of God's truth, even when prophets are screaming for our attention in both words and signs. Jesus praises the Father for having chosen the poor and humble 
to reveal such truths, yet hidden to the powerful and wise. And because Jesus is the full and complete revelation of God that the poor and humble have received, Jesus is also the core to such truths and to the liberation they effect. Hence, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give rest. I will give you rest. Jesus says such words to the poor and humble who hear and believe the gospel in faith with nothing to lose and all to gain. Jesus speaks to you and in his mercy to me also. And it is Jesus' mercy what lies at the heart of these comfortable words. But they were not always in our liturgy, of course. The worship of the church has always evolved and adapted to changing historical circumstances, whether dangerous viruses, as for us today, or the politicking of the English court around the year 1549. Back then, things were changing in England, and the king asked the church for new texts for worship. A very young Archbishop Thomas Cramer was tasked with producing what in time became the first book of common prayer. Part of Cranmer's intent was bringing the scriptures deeper into the worship of the church. So in the communion service, Cranmer inserted four Bible verses right after the confession and absolution, and our comfortable words came into being. Their language was rather different to our own, not to mention the printing style of their books 500 years ago. But both their message and poetry are as powerful today as they ever were. For Archbishop Cramer, these words declare that the full assurance of our salvation is to be found in the Word of God, rather than in clergy, ceremonial, or sacred objects, all of which in the proper perspective, can be very good and holy. But what truly imparts eternal life is revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and as in our case today, in the fullness of that Word of God, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, and His Gospel, His good news, even for us today. I say this precisely in these times we are living in, because Jesus is calling you and us all to rest our burdens on him and thus live like a people of resurrection. He calls us to come to him and he calls especially those who are weary and burdened. Will you? Will we come to him and receive his rest? Will we take his yoke upon our shoulders and learn from his fierce, liberating love and share it with others, especially those whom we know to be burdened? Will we be Jesus to others? Jesus says words of comfort to all who worry and lose sleep over the future, over money, work, and school. To anyone who is sick or who fears falling sick or even worse, making others sick. To anyone who is burdened by the uncertainty or the plain boredom of these days we're living in, Jesus says, come. To those who pray while missing their fellow Christians, their church worship and their sacraments and gatherings, to those who cannot even access these online worship services, and to those who may feel like their loneliness is so heavy to bear, to such the church says, come to Jesus. To anyone who struggles, and to anyone who hopes, Jesus says, come. To anyone who hurts and hopes, the church says, come to Jesus because his burden is easy and his yoke is light and he will make it our own. After all, in just about every yoke I have seen, there is always room 
for two. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, at this point in the service, I am happy to share news and announcements for our parish community. Um, the parish grounds. If you can spare any time for helping with the upkeeping of the gardens, please contact Michael's Scaffold at the uh, details you have on the screen. Now, our Food for Life program continues serving approximately 50 people every week who are food challenged. Those who require food can come anytime after 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday mornings. They receive a bag filled with fruits and vegetables and sometimes we can supplement it with meat or baked goods. I shouldn't say we because I'm not really part of that ministry. You can blame it all on Sheila. And uh, in the announcement, there is a very special thank you to the volunteers who have adapted so easily to this new normal we are going through. Um, have you joined our parish Facebook group? That's a wonderful way to uh, spread the news about our parish, to share uh, our services with others, and also to make people aware of the fact that St. Luke's is still here and very much alive. After this service, um, or at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, we want to welcome you at our coffee hour via Zoom. If you have not received the Zoom information uh, for this gathering, just email me at leonel at stlooksburlington.ca. Yes, Zoom. We're doing everything via Zoom these days, except in this. Because of working regularly with both our parish executive and council, I praise God that this parish has such a solid, faithful, skilled group of lay leaders. And I thank the Lord of the Church for the leadership, generosity, and wisdom which, with which they and so many other gift our common life. Our parish rector, Canon Stuart Spike, has gone on holidays for this month of July. And I know that I pray with this whole congregation that Stuart and his family will enjoy this time of rest very much deserved. And this is all I had for announcements. Uh, friends, please be safe. Look after yourself and those within your reach. As you're able, please keep supporting your parish church with labor, treasure, prayer, and mutual love and care. Pray for one another. Make the odd out of blue phone call to folks you have not heard of in some time, and specifically so people who do not have access to these services. So many things can help in these times, and we are all doing our best. I invite you now to sing the hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, number 508, if you have the hymnal.
Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who calls us into his kingdom. Strengthen your church to stand firmly on her divine foundation in Christ. May the faith which we profess be shown in works of justice, care, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lead all people into the way of truth. When choice is demanded, grant true judgment so that the world may grow closer to the way of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Keep us constant in Christian love for all who come into our lives. Show us ways in which we can make our faith a clear sign to others. Protect our community from the foolishness that brings destruction. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Have mercy on all who have gone astray and chosen evil ways. Give greater assurance to those who are afraid or ashamed to confess their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We bring before you those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Encourage them when their hopes are eroded, that by their steadfast faith in you, they may bring others into your care. Help us all to treasure the health we have, to care for our bodies as we would have others care for us, and to do nothing thoughtless or mean that would endanger the health of others. We offer our prayers this morning for Nicole Hughes, Jane Ross, Paul Benson, Doug McDonald, June, Alex, Nick, Jane Gatke, Christopher, Jeff Smith, Hannah, Sue, Hazen Haywood, Wendy, Bev, Reverend Susan Wells, Peter Robertson, Lindsay and Hazel, Monica, and others we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember before God those who have died in the peace of Christ, remembering especially Phyllis Shura and those who are written on our hearts. Comfort those who are left to mourn and surround them with your unfailing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator and Redeemer, we have approached you this day to offer our prayers and supplications. Make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, 
have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, let us bring to mind and say together what comparable words our Savior Christ says to all that truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all, all that labor and are heavy laden, laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And what St. Paul says, this, this is, a is a true saying, saying and worthy, worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And what St. John says, if anyone sin, we, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world also. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We recall his death, proclaim his resurrection, and look for his coming again in glory, offering you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that your whole church may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, 
I leave you keys. My keys I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin from the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant, Grant us, us your, your peace. peace. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Let us pray. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us and make us one in you. Amen. I worship and adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, present in bread and wine, and present in your people who are gathered in spirit. In this moment, I join with them to receive you in my heart. May you, enthroned on the altar, be now enthroned in my heart. May you, present in bread and wine, feed and renew my soul. May you, who gives yourself to us again, fill us with grace and heavenly blessing. Even as I am fed, may my hunger for you and for your reign of justice and peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give us, us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. O God, may, may we who have shared in holy things never fail to serve you in your world, and so come to the fullness of joy in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.